From the snowmobile capital of the world, Eagle River, Wisconsin, this is the 26th running of the World Championships of Snowmobile Racing. Brought to you by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Skidoo. Better ideas make better snowmobiles. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy Trucks, who invites you to experience the 89 Chevy Trucks and listen to your heartbeat. Hello, I'm Paul Page with three-time Indianapolis 500-mile race champion Bobby Unzer on a magnificent day here at Eagle River. And it's really appropriate to have Bobby along because, indeed, this is the Indianapolis 500 of snowmobile racing. We'll be crowning the world champion here today. But, Bobby, the weather, 35 degrees, blue skies overhead. Great for the spectators, but it could make it a little rougher out on the track. Look, Paul, no gloves. Truly a nice day, the best we've ever seen here. And it, well, what'll happen is, is we're about right now at 35 degrees, three degrees above freezing. The ice is starting to chip away. It's, it's not melting, but it's getting soft. The carbide on the skis are just ripping the ice loose and it makes the racetrack really loose, but it's gonna make a good race. Getting to the starting line as a part of the final field for the World Championship race at Eagle River is a grueling two-day test for the race driver and his machine. Starting at eight o'clock Friday morning, 80 three-minute slots of track time are made available to the Formula One drivers for time trials on the hard ice oval. The 36 fastest sleds with the two-lap time ins advance to the elimination heats. Then, on Saturday, starting at 1 p.m., six elimination heats of six drivers in each race for eight laps. The first and second place sleds in each heat then advance to the semifinals. The remaining 24 drivers are given a second chance in the running of three additional heats of eight laps each with eight drivers competing for the top two positions in each race, narrowing the semifinal field to 18 hopefuls. Then, three 14-lap semifinals with six sleds each are run with the top three of each semi, taking the first nine positions on the starting line for the World Championship race. The consolation, or last chance race, is the last race of the day with nine sleds that did not qualify in the semifinals desperately fighting for the checkered flag and the 10th position in the first row of the World Championship starting line. An exciting and unique possible addition of two more sleds to the World Championship race is being implemented for this year's title race. The winners of the first and second places in Sunday's Formula One final will be given the option of forfeiting prize money and first and second place finish in the record book for a chance to run in a second row position in the World Championships. And Ted Otto, the starter, now beginning to put the sleds online for the World Championships snowmobile race here at Eagle River. Jock Villeneuve, number 96, the fastest qualifier, has chosen the inside position for his starting. Alongside, number 15, Gary Vesser, his brother, number one, Bruce Vesser, in the third position, then comes 04, Chuck Decker from right here in Eagle River. Then Greg Goodwin in number three. Jeff Goodwin, his brother on number four, both Illa and I's coming here to Eagle River. Then Dave Reimenschneider on number 26, Alan Decker on 03, Don Lilly on 33, Mark Perks on 23, and back behind the line, starting in the 11th position, is Dave Wall, who broke the track record here. Starter Ted Otto is ready to go. The green flag flies, and now the sleds head down into the first turn at Eagle River as we are underway. A crowd as they head through one and two and then stretch out onto the back stretch. Greg Goodwin jumps into the lead, going into number three now, as still a battle throughout the pack. This is, remember, a very long race as Greg Goodwin comes across the line, leading lap number one. Surprise, we really expected Jacques Villeneuve to jump up to the front at the start of this race, and he did not. The battle is for second place. We sure did, Paul. Uh, Greg Goodwin just had a real good start. His machine was instantly right off the starting line into the first turn, and right now he's got a fairly good little lead. He's not running away with it by any means, though. Fight for second place, Bruce Vesser and Alan Decker. Now, Bruce Vesser has never raced in the World Championship here at Eagle River. He holds second place right now. The leader continues to be Greg Goodwin. Now, number third place, we gotta watch him, Alan Decker. If you remember earlier, I made the statement that Deckers haven't been doing too well during the qualifying races, Paul, but it certainly looks like Alan's got a breath of fresh air. I think they did a bit of overnight work. We'll keep track of Dave Wall as well. He has moved up and running in fifth position. Remember, he started in the second row. He's quite a story here at Eagle River on the number 74 sled. He broke the track record by a hundredths in the uh, four-degree temperatures 
two days ago and then in the elimination races was involved in an accident. He is riding with an injured left knee and it is uh, a long ride here and that could take its toll during the run. One of the worst accidents we've seen in a long time. Just pegged that wall head on and I think if it hadn't been for those hay bales and a lot of snow behind there, boy, he'd have really been a hurt gator, Paul. Greg Goodwin out in front. Bruce Vesser is chasing and now Dave Wall pulls up to do battle with the 0-3 sled of Allen Decker. So the fight is for fourth place as our leader here, Greg Goodwin, has had a fairly easy run right from the get-go. Now as the temperatures have changed here today, they've dropped about 10 degrees in the past couple of hours, now down to about 27 degrees. That makes a difference in the track surface. Bobby, you were concerned before the start of this race about the dropping temperatures and how if they stayed around freezing and the track surface were to get too slushy, it would make for a very difficult race. Well, if you watch the, the sleds run around the track, you can see all that snow churning up around the sleds, but it really isn't snow. It's all cut up ice. It's all like little tiny ice cubes falling. And ironically, though, the weather's turned back cold again, so the ice is really in good shape and fast. The question to Greg Goodwin. What will it take to win here? Myself, I think in the past I've probably been a little more conservative uh, with the 25 lap feature idea. Uh, tomorrow that will change. I'm going to go as fast as I can right from the start. Bruce Vesser is out in front. Interestingly enough, as, as we call off these names, especially Decker, Vesser, Goodwin, there are three sets of brothers in this world championship run. That's the first time in the history of yeah. this race that's occurred. Three sets of fast brothers that have been racing snowmobiles all their lives, Paul. So out in front, Bruce Vesser, you see him now, and you can see the fight has developed now for second place. As Bruce comes across the line, it's Jacques Villeneuve that is beginning to challenge Greg Goodwin for second place. Villeneuve comes to the high side. As Vesser comes onto the backstretch, you see him at the right edge of your screen, and Villeneuve, for the moment, is around and into second place. Jacques Villeneuve, right from Indianapolis car to snowmobile, but he's been doing snowmobiles all of his life. Indianapolis car, Paul, ironically, at one time, were not his first thing. So the question to Jacques Villeneuve, what is the Villeneuve magic at Eagle River? It does some magic to me here. I don't know why, but uh, the machine runs good here. And it's it's a long straightaway track with uh, sharp corners, so always run that. And I said not too bad. And a short track like we did last weekend in Plymouth is not too good for me. So Wall now up to third place as we're at the halfway point in this run for the world championship. Wall has been the, the crowd's sentimental favorite, and especially after that terrible wreck he had yesterday, to come back today with a hurt leg. And he's really running fast, Paul, but I think it's Jacques Villeneuve right now really putting some pressure on the lead machine, right? No question about it. They head down into the first turn. There's Vesser on the number one slat. Right behind him and running the inside line is Jacques Villeneuve. It indicated before the start of the race that he really wanted the inside line. That's where he ran the best, by bringing that sled down as tight as he can and keeping it tight coming off the corner. Bruce Vesser looks around, checks the position of Villeneuve just behind. Villeneuve three times a champion here, a world champion at Eagle River. Vesser is running in his first Eagle River World Championship. So now... He has Jacques Villeneuve to contend with, and that is a lot of pressure for a new guy. Boy, just look at all that ice they're throwing up. Those things have got carbide cleats all over the tracks, on the skis. I mean, they're really cutting the ice. Look at it as it goes around the corner there, Paul. Really churning up the ice. And Jacques Villeneuve, of course, a very small, light, but tough person. And he's really chasing that Vassar boy right now. Top of the order, Bruce Vassar, followed by Jacques Villeneuve, and then Dave Wall is up in third place right now. Our early leader, Greg Goodwin, has dropped down to fourth place, and the 26th sled of Dave Reimenschneider is running in fifth. Jacques Villeneuve just took over first place, and Bruce Vassar leading it now. We're just having awfully good race right there. Look at Jacques pitch it. Nice. A little bit too high right there. He got in the turn too fast, got passed right back, Paul. And they swap positions once again, so Jacques Villeneuve back in the position of chasing. Brings it down inside Bruce Vesser. They're side by side through one and two. Villeneuve actually forces Vesser up a little high, but Bruce Vesser hangs on. The number one sled out in front. Villeneuve now tries the high line as they go into three and four. Villeneuve gets pushed just a little high and then chops it down for a nice smooth exit, and he's back in pursuit of Bruce Vesser on the main stretch. Normally speaking, Jacques Villeneuve's got a a groove all of his own. He'll go in a little bit high and then what we call diamond in the turn off. He'll just cut right down at the bottom and usually starts a straightaway a little bit sooner than the other guys. 
Sometimes when the track's just right, it gives him a good advantage, Paul. And beginning to pull up into contention as you look at all three of them, the first three positions, Dave Wall was up and closing just a bit. So it's Bruce Vesser, then Jacques Villeneuve, and then Dave Wall as they continue their battle with about six laps to go to determine the world championship. A half mile around this surface to the TV screen. It may look like snow, but let me assure you that is hard, solid ice underneath. They're already starting to dig up the ice a little bit in the grooves. If you watch going into turn one, you can watch the machine bounce a little bit right there. Jock, he went way too high there. You can watch sometimes he gets all the whole machine right in the air at the same time. Bruce Vesser, what will it take to win the world championship? Well, I'd like, I'd like to get the whole shot, but I don't think I, I will. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get the, the best start. You know, we we start to run a little quicker towards the end of the race, and uh, hopefully that's going to continue tomorrow. And once again, Villeneuve runs high off of the second turn, and that gives second place to Dave Wall. So Dave Wall, who, riding with an injury, but riding valiantly nevertheless, now moves into second place and begins his pursuit of Bruce Vesser. Right now, the only sled out of this race has been Chuck Decker. Everybody's still in the race, and it's one of the most exciting races I think we've seen here. And Vesser now at a difficult point in the race because he begins to encounter slower traffic just this quickly and must really pick his way around the sleds that sit in front of him. This is a time, Bobby Unser, when you really need to know the man that you're passing and know what to expect out of him. Oh, you really do. you got to remember, these guys don't have mirrors on these things and their pit crews are not allowed to give them pit signals, so they don't have any idea when somebody's coming up to overlap them, so they really better know the other rider. So for the moment, this man, Bruce Vesser, on the number one sled has the advantage of having a slower set sled separate separating him from the battle for second place. Second place at the moment is occupied by Dave Wall, but right behind him and closing down now is Jacques Villeneuve. Yes, he is, Paul, but remember, Dave Wall started in the second row, spotted back about 15 yards, so he's really come a long ways. Looking for the checkered flag. It's in the hands of Ted Otto, and Bruce Vesser has won the world championship. Dave Wall comes across the line in second, and third place will go to the 96th sled of Jacques Villeneuve. Bruce Vesser, his first ride in the world championships, brings home a checkered flag. Bruce Vesser has won at Eagle River. He went fast and he handled good all day. In fact, if you notice going into turn one when we pointed out the bumps, Paul, his machine was taking it a little bit nicer than the other, not bouncing quite as high as Jacques Villeneuve's did. An extremely impressive ride, smooth all the way. He didn't take it easily to a checkered flag. He battled to get there and battled to stay there. Jock never let up on him. He kept pushing him all the way, and even though he had a little bit of space there at last, meaning a, a lap slid in between he and second place, he still didn't know where they were. One man who has to be very happy. He is all that matters now at Eagle River, as Bruce Vesser has won the Eagle River Snowmobile Derby and is the world champion. notion that the snowmobile is the last horse and if I really want to I can point it west and ride till the sun sets on winter <laughs> 